Hi, my name is Jennifer Moss Logan, and I am an educator at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. And so I'm at home right now practicing social distancing. I'm working with my colleague who's also on the line, Keelan. Awesome to have you here as well. And um, as many of you may know, we have been hosting a great temporary exhibition called Pix, The Science Behind Pixar. It's a super exhibit that goes all into the science, the technology, the engineering, and the art that goes into making some of our most beloved animated films. So with this exhibit there, we learned all sorts of interesting things about making animated films. And one of the things we learned about is how they add sound to these movies. So in an animated film, they have to add all the sounds. There isn't anything except what they add in. In some cases, that can be pretty complex, but in other cases, it's really simple. Let's say they wanna make a hinge sound. They just use a squeaky hinge and they move it to make that sound. If they wanna make footsteps, they can get some shoes and clunk around on the different types of floor to make the sound. So we learned that there are a lot of sounds like that and you can make them with stuff you have at home. So I took a look around my own house to see what I could find and came up with a couple of cool things. And we're going to show you some pictures and make those sounds and see if you can put them together. So let's see. Let's go ahead and get started. And uh, the first sound we're going to make is going to make it with this thing right here. This is just a plastic bag uh, from some cereal. And what I can do is I can crumple it around and make it kind of a sound. And tell me, what does that sound sound like to you? How about a fire? Can you imagine that sound to make the sound of a campfire? Mm, I can almost smell those marshmallows right now. Here's another thing you can use for the same kind of fire as well. I have here an envelope. It's just one of those envelopes from a, maybe a bill or something that I got. And inside of here, it has this little window. And if I make that crinkling sound, it also sounds like a fire. So maybe you can get different kinds of plastic and you can make crackling sounds together uh, with someone else in your household as well. All right, let's look at another sound. So right now what I have is I've got a couple of these uh, plastic cups are the kind of things that there's from some Tupperware or something like that for storing food in your fridge or to take out. And I'm just going to take these two sounds. What does that sound like? It does. It sounds like a horse. And some of you might recognize that from the classic Monty Python um, film. But that's a great way to make the sound of a horse. Okay, let's look at another sound. So for this next one, I have here a bag of cornstarch. Now it gets pretty messy, so heads up on that one. But if you seal it really well, then what you're gonna do, and the sound is a little subtle on this one, but listen to this sound. What does that sound like? Yeah, it's like footsteps going through snow. Now, another sound that they also use to make that crunching through snow is just sand. You're using sand to make the sound, but when your eye sees the snow scene, you think it's snow. Another thing you can use in a winter scene is a pine cone. So I went outside just in my backyard and I found a pine cone. Now my pine cone is kind of the soft kind. It's not ideal for this sound, but if you have that, uh, that pine cone in your backyard that's kind of that crunchy sound, that crunchy kind, go ahead and give it a crunch and you'll be making the same sound they use to make cracking ice sound. So that's another fun one. Okay, let's go to another one. So for this next one, um, I had to make a prop for these. I have some gloves right here. And on the gloves, I have just taped some, uh, some paper clips right here that you can see. And I'm gonna put those on. This is a technique we learned from, from those professional sound artists. It's something that they use. I'm gonna put these on. And then I'm just gonna tap them against a surface and listen to the sound. What does that sound like? That's right. It sounds like dog's toenails. And so you could make this sound, I've got it on my computer right now, you could put it on concrete or on the floor, and you could make your own dog paw sounds with that. So that's pretty fun. Okay, 
let's go on to another sound. I'm gonna take my, take my dog paw gloves off. For this one, we're gonna use a different kind of glove. We're gonna use these are like leather work gloves. And uh, what does that sound like? Like birds. Like they use like the sound of the birds taking off. So they use this to make flapping wing sounds for birds. So very cool. Okay, let's go on to yet another one. Now this one reminds me to tell you about something really interesting with being a sound artist. So for animated films, they have to make all the sounds entirely. But even for movies that would naturally have sound they could record, sometimes they want to do a special recording instead of the kind they can get in the field. So an example would be if they were filming underwater and they wanted some bubble sounds, well, it's really hard to bring your microphone underwater and get the right kind of sound. Or it could be a really big open environment and just hard to get the sound you want. So they remake it in the studio. So I have a sound here from an environment like that. I have just a piece of cloth that I found and I'm gonna shake it. What kind of sound do you think that is? Yeah, what we have there is the sound of the sails on a ship. So technically they could bring a recording microphone out there and get that sound, but it's really hard with all the wind and the, and the water. So they record it back in the studio. And then maybe somebody else splashes some water and those two things together they can use to make the sound of this boat going through, uh, going through the water with the wind going through the sails. So these are the kinds of things that they make uh, that they use to make sound. And when you're doing that in a studio, you are a sound artist. And in fact, there's even a special name for this. You're called a Foley artist, named after the guy who originally came up with this in the 1940s when they were first doing talkies and adding sound to movies. So just as we said, and you can see a guy here in just a moment, just as we said, you could get those sounds out in the field, but often they wanna recreate them right there on the spot. So they'll play the movie, which is completely done, and a Foley artist will be watching the movie and adding those sounds in real time, recording them and adding them in real time. So for example, here you can see that they're recording the sound of this Foley artist dropping a bowling ball onto sand for whatever sound it is they're trying to make. Well, you can do this same thing at home. You can do this, maybe you wanna do a, a recording, like a radio recording or a, or a video blog or a radio blog, or maybe you wanna do some claymation or some stop motion animation. Now you have what you need in order to add the sounds for your own videos. And even if you don't wanna do any of that, you can just go around the house and find some fun stuff that you can use to make sounds in this way. So if you do that, we would love for you to tag us at hashtag DMNS Science Party and uh, send that video over to us. In the meantime, thank you so much. We look forward to having you back at the museum when we're open again. And in the meantime, stay safe. Thank you so much. Have fun.